Hello and welcome to Musings and Monologues, our daily banter about ideas and issues that amaze, affect, or confront us in our daily ritual of existence. Today we shall try to probe the heart of Indian history, not history that is taught to us in school textbooks. We are nothing but a collation of dates and events or battles one or lost, or at best, recording of monuments being built here and there. For those of us who choose to prove history further beyond our school textbooks, we are left with a certain amount of choices, either the extreme right-wing revisionist version of history that is being currently forced down our gullets by the establishment that is there, or the subaltern history written by the likes of Didi Kosambi, but that version of history is nothing beyond arid scholasticism from which the general reading public shies away. We have also the sociologist's point of view, like the works of Ramchandra Guha, but history over here is coloured by personal choices. Hence, we traverse between Gandhi and Bose, between Savarkar and Shivaji, constantly altering the course of history, never knowing any finality of purpose. Empirical evidence, the research of noted and time-tested scholars, is kept away from us in the confines of libraries. It is in this context that we notice the advent of this young New kid on the block, Manu Pillai. Manu amazes us with his astonishing range of vision and knowledge of 4,000 years of recorded Indian history. He speaks to us with absolute forthrightness about something as far back as the Harappan civilization, in which the elements of town planning, the meticulousness of town planning, I am informed by Manu, it has reached such a pinnacle that it can build first floor toilets. He also talks with jest, in jest, about Muhammad Ghori, who makes these tall claims of having killed 20,000 infidels in a day to please his Persian and Islamic masters of the West. The reality of the situation existing in his time was, same Muhammad Ghori, had to get his coins implanted with images of Lakshmi to appease the people he was ruling. The explorations beyond Delhi and North Indian politics is what Manu chooses to probe. Hence, he revisits history beyond the Vindhyas, below the Vindhyas to be specific, in his books. The first book, The Ivory Throne. The second book, Deccan Sultan. In his first book, we hear him recount the extremely entertaining tale of two princesses. The second book, Deccan Sultans, talks about the existence of the Bahamani and the Vijayanagar kingdoms before the advent of Shivaji. It only pinnacles in the end of the book about Shivaji and his confrontation and solidification of forces against the Mughals. In his third book, The Courtesan, The Mahatma and The Italian Brahmin, Manu explores a wide range of subjects. The courtesan, for instance, we are informed, is educated and politically savvy and hence can change the bar vision of contemporary politics that exists during their time, unlike the normal average woman who is meant to stay indoors, or even king, queens, who are made to sit as if effete if potentates beside the monarch. The story of the Mahatma is not about Gandhi, but about Ma Mahatma Pule, who has now been forgotten and vanished aside outside the mainstream. The left 
the Italian Catholic priest who used Hindu Brahmin way of life to convert the uninitiated Janta is the text of the Italian Brahmin who is recounted as somebody existing who came from the West and lived in western part of India about a couple of centuries back. We have recognized that Pillai is not partisan in his views, or neither is he an arid scholar. Unlike Ram Guha, he does not rant about his personal choices or impose an agenda which is personal. He strikes the perfect balance. Informed, well researched point of view, which is evident to the copious notes he makes in all his books. His research is so thorough, and yet he presents to us a prose that is extremely readable and racy. Manu Pillai is two decades our junior, my junior at least, and yet he comes up with the astonishing flavor of a revered, time-tested scholar and a writer of contemporary Desi prose. <coughs> he has miles to go before he sleeps. He never will subvert history, I am sure, given the kind of progress he is making. And now he is working on his thesis in King's College London to complete a PhD degree that will give him the epithet of a doctor. We wish Manu Pillai, the Dr. Manu Pillai, the future Dr. Manu Pillai, all the best in his endeavors. If you have liked the video, please do share it with your friends and do not forget to post your comments about the issues that we have confronted today. For all of you, have a very good day and welcome to giving an alternate point of view. Thank you very much.